Itamar Markus etablerte og har ledet Palestinian Media Watch i, for over, i over 25 år. Siden den gang har de, og med han i spissen, formidlet hva de palestina-arabiske selvstyremyndighetene sier til sine egne. Dette blir formidlet til alle oss andre. De har vist verdenssamfunnet hvilke krefter som opererer i disse rekkene. Arbeidet han leder har ført til en reduksjon, hold dere fast, har ført til en reduksjon på 80 prosent fra det internasjonale samfunnets støtte til PA-myndighetene. Itama Markus, du er varmt velkommen. Please. Okay, <clears throat> I want to thank you, Doug, and uh, thank the organizers uh, for inviting me to this uh, wonderful event. Thank you, Doug. Thank you for organizing this for this wonderful event. And I want to thank Eric for thank the translations. My pleasure, sir. <laughs> and up front, I'll tell you one thing. Let me say something with one if there's anything I say that you think is wrong, anything I say that you don't like, if there's anything you feel that I say is wrong or something you don't like, it was a translation mistake. So it's a wrong translation. Yeah. So thank you for taking the book. Blame it on me. Blame it on me. No problem, sir. We're good. <coughs> Today's topic is why is there still no peace? Dagens tematikk det er hvorfor har vi fortsatt ikke oppnådd en fred? In 1993, after years of negotiations here in Oslo, I the Oslo Accords were signed. Flere års med samtaler så ble Oslo-avtalen underskrevet. It was supposed to be a five-year process. Det skulle være en femårs prosess. And still today there's no peace. Og til dags dato, ingen fred. If you ask the Norwegian leaders spør, why there's no peace, spør man de norske ledere om hvorfor det ikke er noen fred, they'll tell you it's because Israel is an occupier. Så vil det si det er på grunn av at Israel okkuperer landområder. If you listen to what the Palestinians tell their own people and their children, og lytter man til det palestinerne sier til sine egne barn, you get a completely different answer. Så får du et helt annet bilde. And what I want to show you today is a little bit of that answer. The Palestinians tell their people why there is no peace. Så jeg vil prøve å vise deg hva er det de palestinske myndighetene sier til sine for begrunnelse hvorfor det ikke er fred. Finally, as part of my introduction, I also want to thank uh, Mette Johanna Fellestad, who's sitting over here. Og jeg må også takke Mette, som er her. Mette is the European representative of Palestinian Authority. She lives right here in Asgard. Hun er representant for de palestinske myndighetene, bor i Asker. Palestinian Media Watch. Palestinian Media, Media Watch. But I said Palestinian. Ah, yeah. Palestinian Media Watch. <laughs> <laughs> Palestinian Media Watch, ja. And, uh, and helped me with the preparation and with the translations today. Hun har hjulpet meg både i forberedelser og oversettelser på en del av slidene som kommer. First thing I want to talk about is Palestinian Authority political anti-Semitism. Let me say a little bit about the Palestinian anti-Semitism. The Palestinian Authority tells their people that it's not just they who hate Israel and the Jews. They say that it's not just they who hate Israel and the Jews. But the entire world hates Israel and the Jews, and for good reason. The whole world hates the Jewish people with good reason. That's why the Jews brought anti-Semitism on themselves. Og det er derfor at jødene har brakt anti-Semitisme på over seg selv. And I want to show you this in their own words. Og la meg vise deg dette hva de sier selv. Okay. Here's a speaker who was on TV just two months ago, on official controlled Palestinian TV. Her er en taler som var på et offisielt eh, TV-program. Eh, Hadi jama'a yadi, li kull amra bishatat. ولكل أمره هي أنا بسمية بارازيت على الشعوب على الدول ولذلك طهدوا ولذلك عاشوا منعزلين في جيتو مصورين للانقضاض على المجتمع والحماية أنفسهم. Why were the Jews in ghettos in, in Europe? He Hvor, asks. Hvorfor var jødene i gettoer i Europa, spør han. Why were they persecuted? Hvorfor ble de forfølt? Because they were parasites. Fordi and they were dangerous to everyone. De var parasitter. De var farlige for verden. 
Okay, here's another leader. This is a researcher. Här är en annan ledare, en forskare. And this is on Palestinian TV. Det är på Palestinsk TV också. Earlier this year, and here we get the second component of this ideology. Tidigare år har fått den andra ingrediensen i den ideologin. Inom mutaalin la yqbaluna bil akhar, daima muntadirin ala anfusahum. Al europeyun karihuhum. Wa aradu takhallusu minhum. Fakant ihda masalih al dual al europeya takhallus min al yahud. Fabadat fikrat qam al dawla lil yahud. وفكرهم قائم على عنصرية جعلتهم مكروهين في أي مكان. Okay. The Jews were hated everywhere. Yeah, never had it over out. And that's why the Europeans were the ones to decide to create a Jewish state. Och därför var det judarna som bestämt att de skulle skapa en judisk stat. According to this fundamental Palestinian Authority ideology, Israel was created because Europe wanted a garbage dump for its Jews. I följer denna ideologin här så skapade alltså Europa denna staten för att det skulle vara en söppla här och samla judarna på. According to their ideology, Jews would never have thought to come to Israel. I henhold till deras tänkning så ville judar aldrig ha kommit på tanken att de skulle samla sig i Israel. The whole thing was a European idea for self-protection. Det var en konstruktion av Europa för att beskydda sig själv. Okay, and here we come to the third level of this, and here we have a Palestinian speaker on TV. Här har vi en tredje nivå av detta här här sån en talar på på TV. Just read the blue. Read the what? Just to translate. Read the blue. Vi ska translate the blue, yeah. Ja, vi ska översätta det blått. Vi är generellt hatet eller vi generellt hate by the mass. Vi är hatet av massorna. Det är inte något behov för att det var behov för att bli kvitt dem på en måte så att det världen att det kunde tillpassa Englands intresser. De ville plante ett främmed legeme så eller en kropp där till arabernas hemland. I arabernas hemland. Okay, so this is the third component of the ideology. Det är tredje ingrediensen i denna ideologin, sammansättningen. Why did the Europeans send them to Israel and no other place? Varför sände de det till Israel och inte någon annanstans? Because the Europeans wanted a colonial implant so they could control the Middle East. För de europeerna önskade att ha en koloni som en implantat kan du säga för att så kunna kontrollera Mittöstern via Israel. Now this ideology comes from the top. Den ideologin kommer helt från toppledelsen. I want you to listen to Mahmoud Abbas just a few months ago speaking in the United Nations, and this is what he said. Hör på Mahmoud Abbas som talade i UN för en tid. قررت إقامة وزراء كيان آخر في وطننا التاريخ، وذلك لأهداف استعمارية. والحقيقة أن هذه الدول، الدول الغربية كانت تريد أن تتخلص من اليهود وأن تستفيد منهم في فلسطين. تضرب عصفورين بحجر. Okay, here you hear it from the top Palestinian leader. Här hör du också från den top palestinska ledaren. Europe wanted to get rid of their Jews. Europe wanted to control the Middle East. A perfect marriage to create the settler colonial state of Israel. Man Europa önskade att bli kvitt judarna. Man önskade att kontrollera Mellanöstern. Also en perfekt kombination i det område. Okay, so this is the first component: the Palestinian political anti-Semitism. So that's the first ingredient in the political anti-Semitism from Palestine. Okay, and now we go to the Palestinian religious anti-Semitism, which completely strengthens this hate ideology by saying it comes from God. So we have the religious anti-Semitism, where they say that this has its origin in God. Okay, now here you're going to hear in just a moment the translation of the. Top religious figure in the Palestinian Authority. That's a leading religious figure in the Palestinian community. He's Mahmoud Abbas's personal advisor on Islam and head of the Islamic courts. That's Mahmoud Abbas, leading rådgiver for Islam and leader for many other things. And this is what he taught about Jews. And this is what he said about Jews. Jews, the grazing herds of the humanoids. So these are områder of människor, humanoids. We like to call them människor again, but människor in the same way. Människor som Allah skapade som en form för människor. Allah har lagt en förbannelse över det och gjort det till aper och griser. This incredible statement from the top religious figure: Jews aren't even humans. Det är alltså ett ganska speciellt uttalelse från en ledare i det religiösa området där de säger att de är inte en gång människor. And then he went even better than this in a sermon just last month. Och han talade för en månad sedan och gick ända längre i detta. Och det är de som med allt i kitab, låt ju dilla dem. Och de 
خرجوا عن هذه الآدمية خرجوا عن هذه الإنسانية واتبعوا الأبلسة اتبعوا الشيطنة لا يشترط في الشيطان أن يكون جنيا خفيا يمكن أن يكون على صورتك ولكنه شيطان على صورة الآدمي ولكنه شيطان Okay, when you see a Jew, you're actually looking at Satan in the form of a human being. Du ser en jøde, så ser du altså Satan i menneskelig form. Satan in Islam is the source of all the evil in the world. Satan i Islam er opphavet til alt det onde som finnes i verden. So what this top religious figure is saying, så når denne toppreligiøse lederen sier dette, is that Jews are responsible for all that's evil in the world. Så innebærer det at jøder er da ansvarlige for alt det onde som skjer i hele verden. The next stage of Palestinian hatred is to say that not only do Jews endanger the world and the Palestinians, we have particular hatred for Palestinians. Ikke bare er de ansvarlige for det som er i verden, altså jødene er ansvarlige for det, men spesielt i forhold til palestinerne. This was just on Palestinian TV. Det var akkurat på palestinsk TV. One of the senior people in the Ministry of Education. En av lederne innenfor utdanningsdepartementet. And this is what she claimed is written in Israeli school books. Og dette er det hun sier at det står i israelske skolebøker. Jeg er ikke til å gjette hende menneskene og menneskene palestinerne på denne tahridia. Hva er det om menneskene? مناهج حقيقة تطالب بقتل الفلسطيني العربي. Israel teaches their kids that they have to kill Arabs. Of course, it's a lie. So Israel lærer altså barna sine at de må drepe palestinerne. This is one example of the hundreds of messages like this that Palestinians give their people, so they'll be afraid of Israelis. Som selvfølgelig er en løgn, og som man gir da til mengder av sine på en måte barn og ungdommer å undervise om dette her. This is a video that official Palestinian TV created just as a as a filler between programs. Som skulle være på en måte slags nesten reklamepause mellom to programmer. Eller informasjonspause. Just like that, Israel is shooting at Palestinian children. No words, just pictures. Israel also shooter på palestinske barn. Ikke no ord, bare bilder. And this is official government controlled TV. Dette er altså offisielt statseid TV som viser dette. And then we heard this just a month ago on Palestinian TV. Og så hørte vi følgende for en måned siden på palestinsk TV. Israel is so bad that it's teaching Hitler how to be a Nazi. Det er så ille at til og med Hitler blir undervist av disse her, hvordan man skal være en nazist. Now, if you're a Palestinian, and you're hearing all of this, hvis du er noe palestiner, og du hører alt dette, how could you not hate Israelis? Hvordan kan du da ikke hate Israelis? And that's the success of the Palestinian messages to their people. Men det er altså suksessen som de har fått brakt, og den gjennomføringen av informasjon til sitt folk. I'll give you one final example of this. Du får et siste eksempel av dette. وأنا أريد أن أذكر بمقولة للمجحومة جولدا مائير إحدى مقولاتها التسعة الشهيرة وإحداها يعني أتمنى أن أصحو يوما ولا أجد طفلا فلسطينيا واحدا على قيد الحياة Again, ridiculous Golda Meir never said anything even close to this Det er jo helt på trynne for å si det slik på norsk at Golda Meir skulle ha sagt noe i det helst i nærheten av dette but again, if you were a Palestinian and you were told that's the way Israeli prime ministers think, of course you are going to fear them and hate them. Men hvis du er palestiner og dette er den måten du blir kommunisert til at de tenker om deg, selvfølgelig så vil du frykte dem, så vil du vil du hate dem. Okay, the final message that builds this whole case against Israel has to finally do with land. Det siste budskapet som binder dette her til sammen med Israel og dets eksistens handler om landområder. But it doesn't have to do with Judea, Samaria, West Bank. Men det er ikke Judea, Samaria og Vestbøden. It has to do with all of Israel. Det handler om hele Israel. One of their fundamental messages that I said before is that Israel never had history in the land. Et av deres grunnleggende tanker er at Israel har ingen historie i landet. De har aldri historisk sett eksistert i landet. And here is one of those items just on TV two months ago. Og her er noe som ble sagt på TV bare for et par måneder siden. 
هذا المكان هو حائط البراق الحق الخاص والخالص للمسلمين ولم يتخذ اليهود حائط البراق مكانا للعبادة إلا بعد صدور وعد بلفر البريطاني عام 1917 ولم يكن هذا الحائط جزءا من <تصفيق> There never was a temple. The western wall isn't part of the temple. Det har ikke vært noe tempel der. Den vestmuren har ikke vært noen del av noe tempel. And only Muslims have the right to the western wall. Og det er bare muslimer som har retten til vestmuren. And why do they say that Jews started praying only after the Balfour Declaration? Og det sier de at jødene bare begynte å be der etter Balfour-erklæringen. Because it fits in with their ideology that Israel is a colonial implant. Jo, for det passer deres ideologi om at Israel er en kolonistat som har blitt etablert der fra da av. Their message to their people, I'll give you one example from the Ministry of Education. Budskapet til folket fra utdanningsdepartementet. And here you can see this was a Ministry of Education Facebook page, and this is what they put on it, the maps of all of Israel and the Judea Samaria here, and this is the text here on top. Her ser du altså landet her sånn, Israel, hele landet Israel, og så teksten sier Palestina, det hele landet er vårt, fra Middelhavet til Jordan Elvig. No question about it, this is the education of the PA. Ingen spørsmål sagt, bare dette er utdanningen fra myndighetene. And what is the end game? Hva er da enda historien, eller hva man ønsker man å oppnå totalt sett? One example from the Prime Minister of the Palestinian Authority, Muhammad Shdaya. Fra palestinske myndigheter. Der han sier, vi vil bekjempe hatet, okkupasjonen, og de skal forlate vårt land. Ok. Israelis are all going to leave the land. That's the end game according to the Palestinian authority. Israel skal forlate deres land. Det er deres målsetting. What's been the result of all this education and demonization by the Palestinian authority? Hva er da sluttresultatet av denne utdanningen, denne demoniseringen av Israel? This is a poll that was done by the ADL a few years ago. Det var en spørreundersøkelse som ble utført av noe som heter ADL for noen år siden. That was testing anti-Semitic attitudes of all the peoples around the world. Da man prøvet antisemitisme blant alle folkegrupper rundt omkring i verden. Who was it that came out the most anti-Semitic in the entire world? Hvem kom ut som det mest antisemittiske land i verden, eller folkegruppe i verden? Was the West Bank and Gaza with 93% of the population having anti-Semitic attitudes? Det var Vestbredden og Gaza som har 93% palestinerne som bor seg. Now, so many in the world were surprised. They thought the conflict was about land. Mange var så overrasket. De tenkte at konflikten dreide seg om land. We knew that that was false, and we weren't at all surprised. At det var falskt, vi var ikke overrasket i det hele tatt. The Palestinian Authority never told its people about land, that it was about land. They told them it was about us, who we, the Israelis, are. For palestinerne sa at det aldri dreide seg om land, men det dreide seg om oss og jødene og den biten. Because of all of this, we get to literally the, I would say, the, the climax of this ideology. På bakgrunn av det så kommer man nå til det som er klimaks i denne ideologien. Not only is murder of Israelis justified, it's, it's the right thing to do. It's the ethical thing to do. You're doing this for all humanity by protecting everyone from the Jews. I'm going to give you one example. Let me get example. This is from again the top religious figure who spoke on television. It's not in Norwegian. Det er en topp religiøs leder som sier dette her er sånn. Det står ikke på norsk, men jeg skal prøve å oversette i full fart. Allah liker ikke de som er overtredere og dreper dem. Ja, hvis noen som angriper meg, mitt hjem, mitt land, mitt hjemsted, mitt eiendom, og jeg befaler de å kjempe, jeg tillater dem, jeg bare leser det blå, så det er derfor jeg håper litt rann. Og jeg tillater til å drepe dem om nødvendig, som profeten Mohammed har sagt. Drep dem hvor enn du finner dem. Hvis noen tar ditt land, har du rett til å drepe dem. Og du kan drepe dem hvor enn du finner dem. Her har du altså en toppreligiøs kvinn person som sier dette. That every single Israeli is worthy of death according to the Koran. At alle israelere er verdig døden i henhold til Koran. 
And we see that this is the way the Palestinian Authority responds to murder. Og vi ser at dette er den måten de palestinske myndighetene responderer i forhold til når mord er utført. I'm sure you all remember the tragic murder, the cruel murder of Lucy, uh, Mia and Rina D. Du husker ago. sikkert det grusomme drapet på disse tre jentene for bare noen måneder siden. But a month later, Israel caught the two murderers. Uh, en måned senere så tog Israel de som utførte dette drapet. The same day, the Palestinian Authority Prime Minister Samme dag så sier den palestinske minister posted on his Facebook page the following. Skrev da følgende på sin Facebook-side. Uh, glory and eternity. Altså ev- gl- ære og herlighet til våre rettferdige martyrer. Glory and eternity to, to murderers who killed three women in cold blood. Ære i herlighet til myr- mordere som drepte unge jenter med kaldt blod. And this is coming from the prime minister of the PA. Og dette er fra prim- premierministeren i so, Palestina. How could this be? How could this be? <laughs> Hvordan kan det ha seg? The answer is they are a threat to humanity. Fordi at disse er en trussel for menneskeheten. Just because they're Jews. Bare av den engre, enkle grunnen at de er jødene. And therefore when you kill them, it's glory and it's eternity Som, to the martyrs. Når du dreper dem, så er det ære i evighet til martyrene. Also earlier this year, Tidligere again år, it comes from the top. Kommer igen helt fra toppen. To prisoners, two terrorist Israeli Arab prisoners who had murdered an Israeli were released from prison. To som hade då sitt i fängsel för drap blev sluppet lös. The day they were released, den dagen de blev löslat, Mahmoud Abbas called them up on the telephone. Så ringte Mahmoud Abbas dem på telefon. And this is what he told them. Och detta är det han sa till dem. Eh, dere to nämner namnen på dig. Vi är stolta av dere. Dere er forbilder for denne nationen, forbilder for dette folket. Two murderers, Abbas says, are role models. Mordere er forbilder, ifølge Abbas. If you're a Palestinian listening to this on TV, you should know you should go out and kill Israelis, because these are your role models. Og hvis du er palestiner og hører på dette her, her sånn, så får du jo et budskap om at du bør gå ut og drepe jøder, for dette er dine forbilder. So we see here the input from the religious figures and we hear the we see the conclusion after the fact. Och här ser vi alltså detta uttalsen här sån och konklusionen efter att de har utfört det de har gjort. Now, the final topic I want to talk about sista tematik vi ska ta tag i is Palestinian Authority promotion of martyrdom. Är den palestinske uh, stötten till martyrer. Palestinian Authority tries to convince its people that it's good to die for Allah fighting Israel. Palestinska myndigheter försöker obvisa folket att det är gott att dö för det i det att ta livet av det jødiske folk. Now why do they do this? Och varför? The greatest deterrent for terror is the fear of being killed. Den största på något sätt hindringen uh, från terror är frykten för att bli döpt. If you can convince your people who you want to go out and be terrorists. Kan, om du kan överbevisa folket om att de de ska ut och terrorisera. That even better than killing an Israeli. Att det som är ända bättre än att döpa en israeli. It's, it's good to be killed yourself. Är det också en god ting att du i och utförelsen av dör själv. Then you've taken away deterrence. För då fjärnar du all frykt. The Palestinian Authority does this both for its adults and for its children. Och det ser man både till vuxna och barn. And this is some of the examples. Here is a religious figure on TV saying that if you die for Allah, it means you were chosen by Allah. Alltså, visst du dör för Allah, så är det för att du är utvald av Allah till det. Here's another religious leader saying that if you do die for Allah, you will get many rewards in Ja. Dør du for Allah, får du mange belønninger. Including, you will marry the dark-eyed virgins of paradise. Inkludert at du får gifte dig med de mørkøyede eh, jungfrøene i paradis. Ja, I want to show you how seriously the Palestinians take this promise. La meg vise hvor alvorlig myndighetene tar dette løftet. This is a picture, a film, of a funeral of a Palestinian terrorist. Dette er altså en begravelse som er filmet her sånn, av en terrorist. Now listen to the tone of the music. Hør på tonen til musikken. And look at the words. Og se på ordene samtidig. Ok, 
This was a three-minute song during the funeral that was shown on TV. Det är en tre minuters melodi sång som blev spilt tre minuter under TV och där det var. Happy wedding music. Det var alltså glädesfullt bröllopsmusik. And the words were, he's a handsome groom in a wedding procession. Och orden är alltså han är en check brudgom i brudeprocession. Going to paradise. Som ska på väg till paradis. Okay, now. I'm going to show you how they teach this to children. We have dozens of examples. I'm going to show you one of the worst ones. Låt mig visa dig bitte lite grann. Vi har mängder av hur man gör detta här, men hur de undervisar det till barnen sen. Fatah put this on their Facebook page. Detta satt att fatta på sin Facebook sida. Could you imagine a mother telling a child you aren't destined for happiness you are only ammunition Kan du se för dig att en mor säger till sitt barn du är inte skapt för glädje du är bara ammunition That's the message Fatah sent out to its 300,000 followers on Facebook Det är det man sender ut till sina efterföljare 300,000 efterföljare på Facebook Children are ammunition Barn är ammunition Okay now Palestinians have answered this call. Palestinerna har ju besvarat det kallet. I want to show you some responses one after the other of parents. Låt mig visa responsen den ena efter den andra av föräldrar whose children were killed fighting Israel. Som har barn som har dött i sin kamp mot Israel. Alhamdulillah ala kull hal. Alhamdulillah talab al-shahada minat. Alhamdulillah ahla aris bid-dunya. Ahla aris bil-jannah. Okay, the most handsome groom in paradise. Checkas det brudgomen i paradis. Here's another one. Här är en där. Here's another one. And then. And here's another one. And then. I just heard that the child was on the street. We came to the hospital in Yemen. We came to the hospital. It's shocking. Parents who are saying they prefer their children dead as martyrs than to be alive. Forferdelige foreldre som sier at de ville heller foretrekke at barna er martyrer enn at de hadde blitt verdende i livet. And we have dozens and dozens and dozens of messages like this from parents. Og det er dusinvis på dusinvis av vittnesbyrd av dette slaget. And this one is completely shocking from a grandmother who describes... She describes what the martyr did on the day he went out to be a martyr. Och det är chockerande. En bestemor som beskriver alltså vad hennes barnbarn gjorde då den vd kom nick ut för att bli martyr. Just please read. The red. The blue. Oh okay. yeah, okay, the blue. Priset var alla. Han har bett om martyrdom och han har upplevt eller utfört det eller uppnått det. Han sa detta är min bröllopsdag. Igår så förberedde han sig själv, han vasket sig, han tog på de flottaste kläderna sina, tog på aftershave eller parfyme och så satte han i stan, gick han ut och kom inte tillbaka. It's amazing. He believed he was going to his wedding. Han trodde att han skulle gå till sitt bröllop. He washed himself, put on his best clothes, put on his cologne. He was going to die. Basket sig tog på sig den flottaste kläder och efter barberingsvann och and he believed he was going to be meeting the virgins of paradise. Tänkte att han gick där nog klar till att möta jungfrun i paradis. Give you one example of a child who left a farewell letter before he went out to die. Här är ett exempel från ett barn som har skrivit ett farvelbrev för det gick ut för att dö. Priset var Allah. Allah har eh, realiserat min dröm eh, med denna martyre eh, funktion eller martyrdomen eller martyrie för Allah. När jag kommer så till dig som martyr alla säger villig, åh min mor gör mina lyder av glädje och gråt inte. Du ska inte vara ledsen och vidare. Jag är önsket för martyrdomen och jag har uppnått detta. This boy was 14 years old. Den gutten var 14 år gammal som skrev det. When they showed his funeral on TV, look at what they played. Då de visade begravelsen på TV så spelade de följande. Nu ska jag hitta vid här. Oops, sorry. Go back. I 
Accompany me to paradise, my mother. This is the most beautiful time. Bli med mig till paradis. Väck mig till med rosor, min mor. Detta är er min vackraste tid. This is the way Palestinian TV celebrated the death of a 14-year-old, the most beautiful time. Slik feiret palestinska TV detta martyrie. Okay. Finally, why does the Palestinian Authority want its children to be killed? Varför vill palestinska myndigheter att barnen deras ska döpas? because they want the leaders in Oslo and the leaders in Brussels and Washington to condemn Israel. För de vill att ledarna i Oslo, Brussel, Washington ska fördöma det de And I'll give you just an example from last month. Ett exempel från förra månaden. Israel had to go to Jenin to go after terrorists. Israel måste Jenin för att gå efter en terrorist. And after they went in, they killed 12 people on the first day, three of them were children. Och i det de gick in så var det 12 stycken som blev döpt och tre var barn. And this is what UNICEF released. It said it tweeted it's deeply concerned about Israel's killing three children in Jenin. Och UNICEF skrev vi är er dypt bekymrade över dessa tre barn som blev döpt i Jenin. Now, they released this tweet at 9 o'clock on July 4th. Det skrev man klockan 9 den 4 juli. Look what Palestinian Media Watch our organization released 3 hours before this. Och så skrev vi 3 timmar för. These were the three children. Detta var de tre barna. Do they look like children to you? Ser de ut som barn? All of them connected to terror organizations, all of them armed, all of them were fighting Israel. Alla kopplade till terrororganisationer, alla var beväpnat, alla var där för att utföra våld. But the Palestinian Authority had its success. Men palestinska myndigheter hade succé. These children, so-called children, were all dead and Israel was getting condemned. För dessa barna var ju nå döpt och Israel blev fördömt för handlingen. Okay. And our message to Norway and the international community. Och vårt budskap till Norge och den internationella sammanhangen eh samhället är Norge och det internationella samhället må stoppa och fördöma Israel och lägga beskyldningar på de palestinska myndigheterna för sin antisemitism och för att döda palestinska barn för politisk gevinst. The pressure må andra sin hållning till Israel sorry. The pressure has to be on the PA to change Press, not on Israel. Pressen må vara på palestinska myndigheter att de förändrar sig, inte Israel. In fact we've created a hashtag that we're now using save palestinian children from their leaders. <laughs> de har lagt en egen sån här slogan en hashtag rädd palestinska barn från deras ledare. Palestinian children are definitely in danger but it's not from Israel. För palestinska barn står i fara men inte från Israel. I want to show you one final slide. Sista slide. And this is uh, from a press conference that I had with Hillary Clinton in 2007 in the United States Senate. Det är precis som från han hade med Hillary Clinton i 2007 i senaten. And I'll tell you just in a moment why you'll see in a moment why this is so important. Och du skönar snart varför det här är så viktigt. Good morning, do not give Palestinian children an education. They give them an indoctrination that basically profoundly poisons the minds of these children. Okay. In 2007, Hillary Clinton warned that those children are being poisoned. In 2007, so Hillary Clinton and said that these children are being poisoned. Nothing was done then. Nothing was done then. And today, the cemeteries in the Palestinian Authority are filled with children and young people who were poisoned by their own leaders, and that's why they're dead today. Och idag är er kyrkogården fulla av barn och ungdomar som var offer för detta här här så. If Norway and the international community doesn't completely change its attitude toward Israel and the Middle East, och vi kan Norge och internationella myndigheter ändra sin hållning till de palestinska myndigheterna snarast. In 15, 20 years, I'm going to come back here, and there'll even be more dead Palestinian children. Så vill de om 15, 20 år om jag kommer tillbaka hit, var det enda flera palestinska barn som har omkommit i detta. Okay. And the final thing I just want to say is, if anyone wants copies of all of these videos with the Norwegian subtitles, or you have any questions and want to know about our activities, just write to Meta Johanna at meta at palwatch.org. Ja, önskar du kontakt eller önskar du ha någon av dessa filmerna som du har fått sett här, så kan du kontakta Mette på den följande mailadressen och så får du det tillsatt.
Thank you very much. Tusen hjärtligt tack. Thank you.